Hello everybody, this video is on relativistic momentum. By way of review, the effect of special relativity has limited applications. Specifically, effects such as time dilation, length contraction, can only be fully attributed to special relativity in inertial frames of reference, which are frames of reference with either constant speed or is at rest or stationary. These effects only become apparent when the frame of reference is moving at what we call a relativistic speed at a fraction of the speed of light. Usually this occurs when the velocity is greater than 0.3 c, so 30% of the speed of light. Mass dilation is the effect of special relativity on the mass of an object when it starts to travel at a relativistic speed. The mass of a particle traveling at a very high velocity becomes heavier, or in other words, dilated. The relativistic mass, mv, is equal to the rest mass that is measured when the object is not moving, according to the observer who is measuring the mass, divided by the square root of 1 minus v squared over c squared. The implication of mass dilation is that we will need an increasing amount of force to accelerate an object with mass as it approaches the speed of light c. And this is because, according to Newton's law, f is equal to the mass of the object multiplies acceleration. If we have an object whose mass is increasing, for us to maintain a constant acceleration, we also need to increase the force in the same proportion as the mass. Another implication of mass dilation is the momentum of the object. In classical theory, that is Newtonian physics, momentum of a mass is given by its mass multiplied by its velocity mv. However, in special relativity, since the mass of the object is affected by its velocity, its momentum also becomes a function of its velocity. That is, the relative risk momentum of the object is equal to the object's rest mass, m0, multiply its velocity, divided by the square root of 1 minus v squared over c squared. The effects of this equation on the momentum of the object can be better understood by visualizing it on the graph. As the velocity of the object increases and tends towards a relativistic velocity, its momentum increases at a much higher rate. And as its velocity approaches the speed of light, the momentum of the object approaches infinity. It is important to compare the prediction of momentum by Newtonian physics versus that of special relativity. In Newtonian physics, momentum increases linearly with velocity because p is equal to m multiplied by b. So on the graph, you can see as the object's mass increases, the momentum also increases in a linear relationship. In contrast, in special relativity, momentum increases significantly and tends towards infinity as the object's mass approaches the speed of light. When objects travel at slower velocities, you can see that the predictions made by Newtonian physics and special relativity more or less are similar. Relativistic momentum and Newtonian momentum start to deviate from each other when the velocity of the object approaches roughly half the speed of light, and the disparity increases significantly as it approaches the speed of light. Momentum in Newtonian physics also does not account for the limits of a mass speed. We'll talk about this in a moment. Special relativity places a limit on the speed of objects with mass. This can be understood in numerous ways. By Newton's second law, the force required to accelerate an object is equal to its mass multiplied by its acceleration. Since mass dilation is an implication of special relativity, we have already discussed that we need an increasing amount of force to maintain a constant acceleration in order to accommodate for the increasing mass of the object. That means as the object approaches the speed of light, we'll eventually need an infinite amount of force to accelerate the object towards the speed of light. You can also understand this limitation on the speed of the object by using momentum and impulse. The change in momentum, that is also known as impulse, is equal to the product of the force of the object multiplied by the time of which the force is applied. When the object approaches the speed of light, a small change in its velocity will result in a very large change in momentum. So this is the change in momentum, delta p, and this is the change in velocity. A large change in momentum will then require an increasing amount of force. So by the same rationale as I discussed before, we'll eventually require an infinite amount of force if we want the object to achieve the speed of light. Now, why is this impossible? Well, the work done, that is the energy input 
on an object is equal to the force that we want to apply to the object multiplied by its displacement. If the force required eventually approaches infinity, that means the work done or the energy required also will approach infinity. In order for an object with any mass to reach the speed of light, we'll need an infinite amount of energy. And this is the reason why objects with mass will never be able to reach the speed of light nor exceed it. Mass dilation also has implications on the kinetic energy of objects. As we know, in Newtonian physics, kinetic energy is given by half mv squared. If the mass does not remain constant and it becomes dilated as the object approaches the speed of light, you can imagine that the kinetic energy will also deviate from the prediction made from Newtonian physics. As the object approaches c, the kinetic energy of the object also tends towards infinity. What is the momentum of an electron traveling at the speed of 0.99 c? This is a relativistic velocity because it is 99% of the speed of light. So the momentum here that we are calculating is the relativistic momentum, which is given by p equals to m naught times by v divided by 1 minus v squared over c squared, everything square root. The rest mass of an electron is 9.109 times 10 to minus 31 kilograms. And the velocity in the numerator, we should convert this into meters per second. So 0.99 multiplied by 3 times 10 to the power of 8. For the velocity in the denominator, we can leave this in terms of the speed of light. Because by doing so, we can cancel out the c squared, leaving behind simply 1 minus the square of 0.99. And this gives relativistic momentum of 1.9 times 10 to the power minus 21 kilograms meters per second. Find the ratio of this momentum to the classical momentum of the electron. The classical momentum is given by P equals to mv. So this ratio would then be the expression for the relativistic momentum, so m naught times by v divided by 1 minus v squared over c squared divided by m nor v, which is a classical momentum. This will then lead to the cancellation of the expression m nor v and m nor v, which gives us 1 divided by the square root of 1 minus v squared over c squared. And as we saw, this will give me 1 divided by the square root of 1 minus 0.99 squared. And this is simplified to 7.1. So the relativistic momentum to the classical momentum is in a ratio of roughly 7.1 to 1. This concludes the video on relativistic momentum.